followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Mrs. Garza, would you please call the roll? Yes, ma'am. Chair Sieber. Here. Vice Chair Stevens. Here. Mrs. Williams. Here. Mr. Hollingsworth. Mrs. Brooks. Here. Mrs. Paul. Here. And Mrs. Brescia. Here. Dr. Newman, do we have any additions or corrections to the agenda? No, ma'am. Okay. Can I get a motion to approve our public meeting agenda for this evening? Chair, I move that the school board of the city of Manassas approve the public meeting agenda as presented. Second. I have a motion by Vice Chair Stevens, seconded by Mrs. Brooks, that the school board of the city of Manassas approve the public meeting agenda as presented. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? The motion carries 6-0. Superintendent's announcements and spotlights. Mrs. Radford. Thank you, Chair Sieber. Good evening, other members of the board, and good evening to everyone that has joined us here tonight. I'm honored to stand before you um, at this time of our school year that is over for our students, but we're still in it here for us and um, make some acknowledgments of some of our students uh, who recently graduated from Osborne High School. I want to start off with our early identification program or EIP graduates. The Georgia Mason University Early Identification Program or EIP was founded in 1987 in partnership with Northern Virginia High Schools to support students who will be the first in their families to attend college. EIP empowers students to become productive and responsible global citizens and achieve their goal of attaining higher education. Students who successfully complete the EIP program with a 3.2 GPA or higher are automatically admitted into George Mason. Students can participate in eight program components that provide year-round academic achievement and opportunities for personal and social development, civic engagement, and leadership training. Tonight, we want to recognize six Osborne High School Class of 2024 graduates who successfully completed the program. I believe some of them are here tonight. As I call your names, please come forward. Damian Asensio. Yaretsi Gutierrez. Adrian Zaldana. Lester Lazaro. Sebastian Marino. and Ashley Choi. Okay, it's been a great recognition season for all of them with scholarship and awards banquets and all the things that have been happening, but we are so very proud of these students. I'm also happy to report that we have um, 10 Mets Middle School students who have been accepted into the program as the class of 2029. So congratulations to all of you for successfully completing the program and we wish you well. Sebastian Marino. Okay. 
made it. Okay, also tonight we are honored to recognize Agnelli uh, Lucero and Jacqueline Dominguez, two exceptional class of 2024 graduates from Osborne who have been awarded scholarships through the Prince William County Bar Association's Beat the Odds program. So Agnelli and Jacqueline, if you're here, can you please come forward? The Beat the Odds program supports students who have faced significant life challenges and helps them to overcome adversity and achieve their full potential. And Yelly and Jacqueline um, have demonstrated incredible resilience with determination, excelling academically and contributing positively to their community. Their journey is a testament to their commitment to personal growth and their potential to make a lasting impact. We celebrate their achievements and the bright futures that lie ahead of them. Please join me in applauding them for their hard work, dedication, and inspiring perseverance. Congratulations, ladies. I have one more announcement that I'd like to make tonight. During the May meeting, the school board appointed Betty Jo Wenham as the new director of school leadership for Manassas City Public Schools. Ms. Wenham will replace Dr. Eric Brent, who has served as the interim director of school leadership this year. She's coming to us from Madison County Public Schools. In her current role, um, she has shown a solid commitment to student-centered decision-making, maximizing staff talents, and creating innovative um, pathways for specialized instruction for students with disabilities, English language learners, and career and technical education programs. Her efforts have significantly improved student achievement in science and among students with disabilities. Uh, she graduated from Randolph-Macon College with a bachelor's degree in sociology and a minor in psychology. She earned a master's degree in special education from Liberty University and a postmaster certificate in educational leadership from George Washington University. She also holds endorsements in administration and supervision and special education and is currently pursuing her doctorate from Virginia Tech. She will begin her new assignment with MCPS officially July 1st but she is here tonight to greet you, so please join me in welcoming her now to Manassas. Good evening, thank you all for having me and also just extending thank you to Superintendent Newman and the panel that selected me. I'm so excited to be here and to get to know each of you better and most importantly just to get to know the kids and immerse myself among the leaders so that we can have the schools that the kids deserve and that's where my heart is um, and I hope that's where you always will find it. If you need anything, I'm here. I'm happy to grow with you all and make us the best we can be. So thank you so much. I do. And I would like to introduce my family, <laughs> Josie Kate, and she is going, you can come up. Josie Kate is going into fourth grade and Bryce, <laughs> he is going into second grade. So they are so excited to be here and to see where mom's new work location will be. So we're excited. Bryce, do you not want to come up? <laughs> <laughs> but thank you guys. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to the family and welcome to your family. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Next up on our agenda is board committee reports, and we have the policy committee. Do you want to do a brief summary before our discussion? Um, the policies we most recently discussed on May 7th will be on the discussion agenda. There weren't any huge changes, but we'll go over them briefly when we get to them on the discussion agenda. We had a, a policy committee meeting on the 7th of May. We had another one on the 6th of June. Uh, what was presented on the 7th of May is up for discussion at this meeting. On the next meeting, it will be up for approval on the consent agenda. What was presented on the 4th of June will be presented 
on the discussion agenda on the 4th of, uh, no, excuse me, not the 4th of July. The 1st July school board meeting will be on the consent agenda on the 2nd July school board meeting. Then on the 25th of June, we will have another policy committee meeting and those policies will be discussed at our 1st July meeting and will be voted on on our 2nd July meeting. So there's a lot going on in the policy committee meeting. So. Thank you, Vice Chair Stevens, Chair of the Policy Committee. Next up on our agenda is citizens' comments. At this time, we welcome citizens who wish to speak about services, policies, and affairs of the City of Manassas Public Schools. Because we have an agenda we need to complete, we ask that comments be limited to three minutes. We appreciate the time you have taken to be here, and we treat citizens' comments as a public hearing and do not engage in conversation with speakers. The lack of an immediate response to your comments should not be taken as a lack of interest or concern. Please be respectful when presenting your comments. And up first, I have Janet Graham. Hello, I'm Janet Graham, uh, formerly worked for the City of Manassas Public Schools. Uh, I wrote the original Integrated Math and Science program uh, and I also was on the committee that started the Governor's School. Uh, when I wrote the curriculum for the Integrated Math and Science program, I realized that I had two curricula to f blend together, and those two curricula, uh, at the end of the year, we would be responsible for standards of learning tests. Uh, I think you have the same situation coming up in your integrated program, and I think it's ill-advised to uh, have more than one level of mathematics to integrate into the science at the seventh grade level and then again more than one level of mathematics to integrate into the science at the eighth grade level. Um, the original intent of the integrated math science program was to integrate curricula and my only association with it frankly right now is that I tutor students and I have over the past years uh, from one was in the EIP program right now um, in the IMS program, and so I see the materials that they're bringing in. Uh, we went through several years of really no true integration at all, and now we currently have teachers that are effectively integrating, and I would hate to see that destroyed by having too many curricula to integrate into one. Um, it doesn't annoy me that you would choose a different level, but having several levels is really kind of beyond the, the the scope of integration. It's just way too hard. I would recommend algebra at the seventh grade level. And the reason that I would recommend that is because ultimately um, the uh, most ambitious students, maybe not the most talented, but the most ambitious students uh, can take uh, calculus in their junior year. And in order to achieve that, you need to have algebra at the seventh grade and then the progression goes on up. Um, not everybody needs to take calculus in their junior year, but we have a clientele that deserves to have that need met. And I think sometimes we slight the uh, clientele that have that ambition uh, in favor of um, trying to serve too many masters. I know when I was in charge of integrated math and science, uh, we were under scrutiny from the Department of Justice for immigration issues. Uh, we brought on ourselves um, and they, they uh, looked at my IMS program and they found that our demographics exactly met the demographics of our wider population. I think if you need to readjust in the integrated math science program, I would look at your admission policies uh, but not change the levels of instruction. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Graham. That's all I have who signed up. Is there anybody else that wished to speak? Please come forward, sign in on the sheet up front. Is there a sheet there for you to sign in? Okay.
Matthew good Williams. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Matthew Williams, and I'm here to speak for the IMS and IH programs about some changes that are being moved forward. There have recently been changes planned to be made to the IMS and IH programs at METS, which are being moved forward without the approval of all the students and teachers that are in both programs. Because of this, the teachers and students are trying to rise up and fight for each program. I will explain to you why I believe these changes should be reversed and why it's best for the programs to remain untouched for the time being. The two main changes I'm hearing about that are being brought to the programs is that all high requirements are being removed and the courses provided by each program are being watered down in some way. The plan for how these changes are supposed to affect the programs is to essentially create more diversity in the people who join the programs and also gives more people some big opportunities provided from simply taking the courses in the programs. These are the main benefits to this change, but I will be talking more about the negatives and how I believe they outweigh the positives. Assuming a student applies with, no, with absolutely no first-hand experience given in either sixth or seventh grade, quite a lot of bad things could happen. If they weren't already prepared, which will likely be the case, the student could begin to feel very overwhelmed with the extra work they're given and maybe even fail out of the courses. There were a small handful of students that already met the requirements that failed out of the program they were in, so I have no doubts the same thing could happen to these newer students. Even worse, if more of these students applied, then the progress the teachers of the course are making with the students could be slowed down immediately, assuming multiple students at once need the extra assistance. This would lower the productivity of students and teachers in each class. The main, the main reason I see for watering down the programs is simply just so these newer students can actually keep up with the rigor, which I believe is unfair as they already had their chance to join an advanced course all the way back in sixth grade, where they could learn how to keep up with the high rigor of each program. Providing them a second opportunity is unbeneficial, since lowering the rigor seems to be the best solution to help them sail into the programs. In conclusion, the recent changes currently being made to the IMS and IH programs at METS Middle School are starting to drive students to lose interest, as not many want to actually continue working in the programs which are being watered down. Every student is also disappointed, including myself, that they put so much effort into actually being able to join the programs just to hear that now students can simply join with not nearly as much effort as they have put in. With such displeasement and sudden uninterest in the programs. Thank you, Mr. Williams. If there's anything left to be said, you can always email it to us, okay? Yep. But that's your three minute limit. Thank you. Is, is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Moving along to our consent agenda. Can I get a motion, please? Chair, I move that the school board of the city of Manassas approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. I have a motion by Vice Chair Stevens, seconded by Mrs. Williams, that the school board of the city of Manassas approve the consent agenda as presented. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 6 0. First up on our discussion agenda tonight is. Um, the application process for an at-large officer for the VSBA. I'd like to make a nomination for Miss Jill Spall to apply as a candidate. She meets all the requirements and I think would bring um, a lot of attention to the position and represent us very well, even at an at-large because you'd be representing the entire state. So I'd like to go ahead and open that up for discussion. Second. Oh, we're not going to motion it. Oh. It's a discussion tonight, and then in two weeks we will have, unless somebody wants to waive second reading. It's, that's always I'll a problem. I'll waive second reading. Yeah. 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 I, think, I think it's, I move. <laughs> I move that we waive second reading. And second. And vote approve tonight. the nomination. Approve the nomination. Thank you. <laughs> I have a motion by Mrs. Brooks, seconded by Mrs. Williams, that we waive second reading and nominate Jill Spall as a candidate 
for an at-large position on the VSBA Board of Directors. Is there any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries 6-0. Thank you for volunteering. <laughs> All right, next up is policies and I'll go to our policy chair, Lisa Stevens. Thank you. Um, as I said earlier, we had two recent meetings, one on the 5th, I mean, excuse me, one on the 7th of May and one on the 6th of June. The discussion we had on the 7th of May is what is being presented tonight. We looked at a total, we have policy committee meetings whenever the VSBA pushes out um, updates, revisions, additions, deletions to policies, and they usually use, do it as a large block. So on the 7th, we looked at a total of 61 policies. 11 of them are policies that have been modified by the city of Manassas Public Schools to best fit our school's needs. Out of those um, 61 total policies, 14 policies were reviewed by the VSBA, but were not revised. No, no changes were made to them. 10 had cross-references and or legal updates added or deleted. 15 had policy and legal update, updates, excuse me. Seven policies were deleted by the VSBA because they're no longer required by Virginia law. And there were five policies that MCPS did not adopt. Most of the policies that were updated, it was language in the policies to go from a passive voice to an active voice or to change a gendered term to a non-gendered term as in his, hers to um, agents. Uh, the one policy we talked about a little bit more in depth when we met on the 7th was a policy that was being split into two policies, which um, was to allow breastfeeding for mothers. It originally had been a policy that applied to both staff and students, and the VSBA chose to divide it into two policies. That was the one we spoke the most about when we met on the 7th. The policies we looked at on the 7th we'll be voting on at our next school board meeting. They will be on the consent agenda. Thank you very much. Any questions from any members? No. Nope. I have a question, Ms. Chair. Um, the, the policies that we had not adopted but are in in here now which in also includes the lactation policy are we adopting this as we vote on it so next meeting? that's a great question um the lactation policy is not one that we've not adopted what we're looking at tonight is the ones that we have not adopted don't apply to us because of our processes and procedures okay it's not that we didn't we don't Excuse me, it's not that they were not previously adopted because we didn't agree with them, but they didn't apply to our school system. And in many cases, it's because we already have our own policies or regulations in place that are, for lack of a better term, stricter than what the VSBA was doing. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We look forward to that the next meeting. Next on our agenda is student achievement, a summer school update. Mr. Craig Gefeller, Executive Director of Student Achievement, and Dr. Ed Stevenson, Director of Instruction, will provide a summer school update. Good evening, Chair Seberg, Vice Chair Stevens, members of the school board, and Dr. Newman. I am pleased to have the opportunity to share additional information about the instructional focus for our summer school programs at Round Elementary and Mayfield Intermediate that will be occurring from June 24th to July 11th. Now this is an overview of the daily schedule we will be using to address the three instructional components of the program, literacy, academic support, and learning exploration. While this represents the base schedule the programs will be using, uh, the two school sites will have flexibility to adapt the time and sequence of these instructional blocks to meet student and program needs. The first and primary program component is literacy instruction. A focus on literacy allows us to align summer school with the Virginia Literacy Act and Virginia Department of Education Learning Recovery Guidelines. It also supports key MCPS strategic priorities and foundational skills that students need to be successful across all content areas. Students in the program will benefit from a review of phonological, 
comprehension, oral language, and written skills. Students in grades two through six will receive the appropriate benchmark advance foundations review and routines, lesson series, and students in grades seven through eight will engage in supplemental review and extension oriented units from our secondary adopted literacy resource. The second component of our program is academic support. Our teachers will use student achievement and diagnostic data to provide targeted support in math and reading based on their needs. Teachers will use a combination of local adopted and state approved resources and platforms to provide this support. Uh, the third and final component of our program is learning exploration. Teachers will utilize resources and topics we provide to engage students in exploratory tasks based on their needs and interests in the classroom. These short explorations will take about one to three days with the opportunity for students to dive more deeply into a topic if they show or develop a greater interest. And you can see a couple of examples of these uh, mini exploration topics uh, on the slide. As students complete these tasks, they will have the opportunity to orally share their learning with a partner or small group. Teachers will then work with students to collect artifacts in a portfolio that they will share as part of a gallery walk style showcase on the last day of summer school. Thank you, and I would be happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions from the board? Ms. Brescia? I do have one question, as it turns out. Learning exploration was on the agenda for the day. Could you give an example of what that might mean? Like, what is, what is an example of a learning exploration activity? So uh, can we bring the, um, the slides back up? Or... So if you go back, yes, we, if we go back to the learning exploration slide, one example would be to write a story from a point of view of a drop of water, it's cross-curricular, all right, it follow, follow it through a week as it goes through the water cycle, so a child would write that story, they'd have a chance to discuss it orally with a, uh, a peer, and that would be part of the portfolio they would present at the end of the, of the session, so. Okay. Um, Dr. Stevenson, when we look at the schedule for the day, and I'm not sure what slide number it is, I'm going to say it's uh, slide two. Yeah. Um, we have 10 to 10.30 math support or learning exploration, and then 10.35 to 11.05 reading support or learning exploration. What deter are there certain students who will have math support, or are there students who will just have learning exploration? What is... So, yeah. Some of the students um, will only need math support. Okay. Some will only need reading support. Some may need both. And so students who need one or the other will have learning exploration for the other part of that block. Okay. So um, will, they, yeah. will each group of children, children stay together throughout the day, or will, will the groupings change depending upon need? Uh, in this part of the day, there will be some smaller grouping within the larger classrooms. Uh, we've already targeted a quite small class size, uh, around 15. Um, some are a little lower than that, some a little higher than that, but we are going to be in a very good position with how we've staffed the program to be quite flexible to group kids according to needs. So the students who are in learning exploration, can we expect a finished product from them kind of like we had la were you last year, last mm -hmm. summer, where we had students do in-depth projects that they started on at the beginning of summer school all the way through the end of summer school. Will we see that from some of them or will it be more smaller learning exploration uh, projects? It's hard for me to, to be able to predict exactly what the difference will be um, having not seen it last year, but based on my understanding of the model last year versus this year um, is the gallery walk will be, be more of a showcase of multiple things they've done over the three weeks um, and it'll be focused more on them presenting that clearly and effectively as part of their literacy skill building. And so mm -hmm. when we have literacy and then reading support, what's the difference between literacy and reading support? So literacy is building basic skills, so phonological awareness, comprehension, 
Um, reading support is where we use a platform or a tool to diagnose specific areas of needs, gaps. So for example, one of the um, tools on there is Lexia. I don't know um, uh, how familiar everyone is with that resource, but that's a resource that has built-in diagnostic tools that then respond with specifically tailored instruction for the child and the teacher to use to target their areas of need. Okay, so yeah. literacy is more the holistic yes. whole experience, and then that reading support is that very specific drilled down to each individual student. Correct. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yeah. Mrs. Ball. So, sorry, I just, um, I wanted to get a sense of how many, I, I don't know if you can answer this in public or you send it to us privately, either way is fine, but I just wanted to get a sense of how many students are in summer school. Oh, we currently have 570 signed up grades two through eight, and another 260 signed up for um, grades nine through 12. 170 is two through eight? Uh, uh, sorry, 570. 570, okay. Sorry. 570. Um, and we're at Mayfield and? Yeah, Mayfie Mayfield for grades five through eight, and then round for grades two through four. Okay, and then also at Osborne. Yeah, and then, uh, yes, as well at Osborne. We have the 260 and students there. Yes. July 11th is the gallery walk or yeah. the force putting t time aside in our schedules. Um, okay, so yeah, the, the only other thing is, um, that's a good number. I mean, yes. uh, was it invite only? Did uh, you ask, were people, could people ask? I mean, is this, is there an acceleration option or is this all remediating or? So, so we did invite, we invite, and so we started with the students that were, had the highest need according to the evidence and then we kind of moved from there. Uh, enrollment is up um, this year, which we're very happy about. We were able to get more kids interested. We were also able to get a, a few more staff members to scale to that larger size. Great. So we're, we're, we're very happy about where we are with that. Okay. Well, thank you mm -hmm. very much. We're excited also. Thank you, Dr. Stevenson, Mr. Gefeller. I look forward to the showcase. Come visit that. All right. We've reached toward the end of our agenda at board members' comments, and I'll go first to Mrs. Ball. Okay, so um, I just wanted to say happy Pride Month and Juneteenth. I love the MCPS commitment to inclusion, and June is an important month for us to show our support. I'd like to say good luck to, um, to the staff and families preparing for summer school. Um, this summer, I'm preparing for Aviation Academy um, working on design committee for new, new dean and thankful to be considered for the VSBA at large position as I would like to begin to be more focused in the coming year on legislative priorities. I feel there is much work to be done in recognizing the powerful position teachers and education play as a corner store for, cornerstone for societal growth and development. So I'll be looking for ways to make change for the better for those who shape our future. Should I be selected? <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Ball. Mrs. Brescia. Thank you very much. Um, I want to wish everybody a happy start to summer. It has been, um, I feel like it's been forever since we've been back on this dais, and it's only been one meeting that uh, we quote unquote missed. But it's good to be back. I would like to briefly address um, the IMS IH changes for the last time for the foreseeable future. I, I did ask to have this on the agenda for today, but was informed there was not appetite for this which is fine, though I do think there is continued public appetite uh, for information on this topic. I believe not bringing it back tonight was a mistake and a missed opportunity. Misinformation can only take hold when there is missing information, and I think that is what happened here. Our first and so far only presentation on this topic was sorely lacking in detail. The information night we held was a nice step and a good gesture, but it was not a comprehensive presentation, and it was also not recorded. The presentation to the Gifted and Talented Advisory Committee was good, but again, it was a limited audience and again, not recorded. And I sincerely believe that no one has anything to hide here. And I don't really fully understand why we're acting like we do. I wish things had gone differently. Uh, but I do think that this is a prime opportunity for us to discuss improvements to our communication, which I understand is a topic that is coming, uh, that is something we'll be discussing shortly at the retreat, so I do look forward to that. And with that, I pass the mic, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. Well, I want to uh, congratulate our uh, spotlight 
award scholarship recipients um, tonight. I'm excited to actually be able to present a couple scholarships to um, some of our own Osborne High School students tomorrow afternoon. Um, so the scholarship recipients continue, continue, and I love that. Um, I want to really congratulate all of our Osborne High School graduates. Um, we had the graduation ceremony, and it was, it was, it's always amazing to me. My kids are already graduated, and it still puts a tear in my eye of joy when I um, attend the graduations. Yesterday, I volunteered to um, help raise money for a fundraiser with Rotary Club. We had a golf tournament, and beside me, volunteering, was one of our recent high, Osborne High School graduates, and that just made me feel amazing. Um, I was so proud to see that, that our students are still out there in the community helping one another. Uh, Dr. Wineham, did I have that right? Winham. <laughs> Winham. 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 Well, I will get it right next time. However, I wanted to uh, welcome you to the family. I'm actually, a, I think the uh, camaraderie, well, I, camaraderie in a nice way, but also a little probably competition between you and Dr. Newman. He went to Bridgewater, you went to Randolph-Macon, so we'll see. He may have a baseball cap in his office for you at one time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if, you, if you'd like to go grab that out of his office. Um, so anyway, welcome. I think you'll find that we all have a great sense of humor. We work hard, but we also work well together. Um, everybody have a great summer. To talk more about summer school, I want everybody to remember that buses are still going around with kids and uh, be careful and watch out for buses as kids are coming on and off the bus for, for summer school. Other than that, have a great summer and a safe summer. Mrs. Brooks. Thank you, Chair. I also want to welcome our new Director of uh, School, um, school uh, Leadership and congratulations to all of the scholars that were in our audience and you know, won you know, scholarships tonight and for any other you know, wonderful students that joined us. Um, I also want to say we did it. We got through another year, another academic year. Congratulations to everyone. You worked really hard. Uh, but remember that summer is not a chance to just do nothing. It's a great time to either go to summer school or take advantage of all the many other opportunities, camps, classes, clubs, everything that the city has to offer. So take advantage and have a great summer and thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Brooks. Vice Chair Stevens. Thank you, Chair. Um, this June, I want to talk about Juneteenth and explain a little bit of the background behind Juneteenth. On January 1st, 1863, the Emancipation Proclamation went into effect, freeing all enslaved people, declaring all enslaved people were now legally free. However, it took two additional years for the Emancipation Proclamation to be recognized in the westernmost Confederate state, Texas. On June 19, 1865, 2,000 Union troops arrived in Galveston Bay to inform more than 250,000 enslaved people that they were now free. For many people, that day and this day every year is known as Juneteenth and is our second Independence Day. So if you don't know about Juneteenth, take some time to learn about it, read about it, and go to the uh, African American History Museum to find out why it is so important. It's half our population. So happy Juneteenth on the 19th of June this year. Uh, happy summer vacation and happy Pride Month to all. Thank you. I want to um, announce that we're having a community health and wellness fair at Osborne High School Saturday, August 3rd. It will be from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. If you've been to this event before, there's school supplies that are given out, so get there early. Um, vaccinations, lots of information, and all our community resources will be there to, pro to provide resources to our community. Um, I also want to circle back to the Beat the Odds and EIP students. Congratulations on um, reaching graduation and for being recognized for your hard work. And I also want to say that I'm very grateful for the win with the hiring Miss Benny Jo Wenham. Did I say it right? Okay. 
um, and for joining our family. Thank you. Um, that's all I have. So can I get a motion to adjourn? Chair, I move that the school board meeting of the city of Manassas adjourn. Second. I have a motion by Vice Chair Stevens, second by Mrs. Brooks, that the school board meeting adjourn. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 6-0. We are adjourned. Thank you.